We are recording the session. I will send out the recording and I will send out the slides after the session as well. So um, be on the lookout for that. So first today, we're going to talk about what hypothesis social annotation is and why you might want to use it in your classes. Uh, and then I will demo setting up a uh, hypothesis enabled reading in Brightspace. Um, and then we have time for discussion and questions throughout. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. You don't have to wait until the end or anything like that. It's a pretty small group. So feel free to throw questions in the chat, comments, anything like that throughout the session. If you could open up the chat now, actually, and give us a brief introduction and uh, let us know where you're from, what you teach, and what your experience with Hypothesis is, that would be super helpful to me, just so I have a little bit of context to continue with. Um, you know, if everyone is brand new at Hypothesis, I might say some things that are different than if everyone is a seasoned user. Um, so while people are typing out their responses, just a quick intro from my end. My name is Christy DeCarolis. I'm a customer success manager here at Hypothesis. I'm located in Southern New Jersey, so I'm kind of in the Philly suburbs. Um, before coming to Hypothesis, I was an instructional designer at Rutgers for a very long time, and I teach an online course, just like Christina was saying, she teaches in a fully online program. I teach an online course uh, called Gender and Technology, uh, and I use Hypothesis in my own courses as well. So sometimes I throw in little tidbits about that. Um, so if you haven't thrown your intro in the chat yet, so first I'll start out by talking about what it looks like to annotate with hypothesis. We'll start out because we have a mix of experience here. I'll just start out by giving a brief overview of hypothesis, of what it looks like to socially annotate in Brightspace. We've actually had a lot of schools recently do a Blackboard to Brightspace uh, shift. Um, so that's pretty interesting, Eric, that your institution is doing that as well. So I'm kind of hopped over to my Brightspace um, area here, and I have a few articles that I've loaded in. So if I open one of my articles here that I have linked in Brightspace, you'll notice a couple of things. So my article has loaded in. I have my reading on the left-hand side of the screen. And then what Hypothesis essentially is doing is loading this annotation sidebar onto the right-hand side of the screen. So students are opening their readings like they typically would in the learning management system. And on the right-hand side of the screen, they have this new space where they can kind of have a discussion about the text with their classmates. Um, so I'll scroll through the reading and just kind of highlight some things that you might notice. One thing is, is that there are some highlights throughout the reading. So you can see that there are pieces of text that have been highlighted yellow. That means that a student has annotated that text or me as the instructor has annotated that text. So if I kind of look at this social annotation tools as, with hypothesis highlighted text, I'll notice that that's actually included in the annotation on the right here. So each annotation itself quotes a specific piece of text from the left that the reader is reading. As I hover over this uh, text, you'll notice that the text on the left-hand side uh, actually changes color. So sometimes people are asking me, how do I know what students are annotating? There's lots of highlights going on. If you hover over that annotation text, you can see exactly what's being annotated. So you get a very deep sense of what pieces of text the students are commenting on because it's quoted there, because it's anchored in the text itself. You'll also notice as I scroll through that some of these annotations have the option to show replies. So that means that there's a conversation happening about that particular piece of text. So when I click on show replies, it will expand the conversation. Um, 
almost like you, what you would see in a threaded discussion board. I don't always like to make that comparison because people kind of have a negative impression of discussion boards sometimes, but that threading of replies is structured in a very similar way. So really just comparing the structure here. Um, this conversation is not super deep though. <laughs> so I can see that the annotations themselves can be connected. So this annotation is connected to the text on the left. And then annotations can also be connected to other annotations as replies. So these two annotations are connected to the one above. So that's kind of how we anchor our conversations in the text itself. And we have some basic editing features on the sidebar here. Um, people, students, my own annotations, I can click the pencil icon to edit. I could delete my own annotations. I could reply to others using the arrow icon. And if I wanted to add a whole new annotation, all I would have to do is select the text on the left-hand side of the screen with my mouse. Uh, and then this annotate button would appear and I would click it. And I would then type my super meaningful annotation which when I am typing live is never really super meaningful. Then I click post and add my thoughts to the conversation. So you can see as I'm going through here, if I'm a student reading, I can kind of pause, take a second to type out my thoughts and move on. I don't have to leave the text. I can have this conversation about the text as I'm reading. And that's kind of a key of how the hypothesis is different from a discussion board. Uh, this reaction, this metacognition is all happening as the students are completing the reading rather than them doing the reading in one space as one activity and then moving on to the discussion and completing the discussion as a separate activity. Um, so we tend to see a lot more conversationality, um, a broader range of topics that have been brought up in the conversations. Um, and just a lot more activity from students in general. So those are kind of our basics of what we see in the hypothesis sidebar here. Um, I'm going to return to my slides. And again, feel free if you have any questions about what you're seeing, you can put them in the chat as we're going through. So here at Hypothesis, we like to say um, that using Hypothesis social annotation, makes reading active, visible, and social. Um, and I'll explain a little bit about each of these. Hypothesis makes reading more active because putting that hypothesis sidebar on top of the text is giving the students a space and also asking them to actively reflect on the reading as they complete it. So as the students are going through the reading, you're asking them um, to ask questions, to write their connections about perhaps what they've learned in other courses or connect to other topics within the course. And um, doing that is really encouraging them to um, engage in metacognition, which they might not do if they were reading on their own. Hypothesis makes reading more visible to students in the class, but also to us as instructors. So a lot of times when we assign reading to our students, they kind of go off, you know, back to their homes, back to their dorm rooms, back to wherever they're reading on their own. We don't really know what's kind of going through their head as they're completing their reading. Adding hypothesis will give us the opportunity to see where do they have questions? What parts of the text are they annotating? What parts of the text are they avoiding? Um, so all of that is kind of information about how the students are interpreting the texts. Um, and it's also powerful in a way that connects to our third piece, which is that hypothesis makes reading more social. Um, so I always feel like I'm not explicit about this the first time I bring up hypothesis, but when a student opens the hypothesis enabled reading in Brightspace, Given the default settings of how you set up your assignment, they will see everybody else's annotations in the class. So the instructor's annotations and all their classmates' annotations will be visible in that sidebar. 
we could tweak that if we wanted to, but the default setting is that everyone's annotating together. So hypothesis makes reading social because students are seeing how their classmates are interpreting the text, what questions their classmates are asking about the text, how those questions are being answered. Um, and a lot seeing those things can often help students with a sense of belonging um, and build a sense of community, especially in classes like Christina, you mentioned you're in a fully online program. Sometimes it can be hard to get out of that feeling of isolation in fully online programs. And the social aspect of hypothesis can really be helpful um, in the community building. So um, there are some resources to get started here. Again, I'll throw the link to the slides in the chat. Um, but my favorite to share with students are really these, um, the first and the third. So annotation tips for students and then information on how to add images, videos, and links to annotations um, because those can be helpful to get students started. So some specifics about how Hypothesis works in Brightspace. Um, a couple of key ideas about the integration. Uh, the way that you access readings and the way that students access readings in Brightspace um, look kind of just like what I just showed you. There's not really a different student view. Um, the students open a reading from their Brightspace course and they're signed automatically into Hypothesis. So they don't need to create an account. They don't need to log into anything separately. It's not sending them to like a third party website. Everything's still happening in Brightspace. Another nice thing about the integration is that you can grade the students' annotations if you would like to give them a grade right within Brightspace. Um, so when I look at my annotation assignment that I had brought up before, you may have noticed at the top, I have this grade bar. And um, I have in the drop down menu, my students that have annotated. So when I'm ready to assign grades for the assignment, I can select a student and Hypothesis will show me just that student's annotations. I could enter a score for that student and then move on to the next one and just view that student's annotations. And those grades will be sent back to the gradebook in Brightspace. Um, so um, Eric is shifting from Blackboard to a Brightspace, this is really exactly the same as how, as how it works in Blackboard as well. Um, so the grading is pretty seamless. And then the other nice thing is that, as I mentioned earlier, the default setting is that everyone in the class is annotating together. But say you have a class of like 100 students, you might not want 100 students annotating together. That's a lot of students on one document. You can use the group sets in Brightspace to create smaller groups for students to annotate in. Um, so you can create the group sets in Brightspace. Maybe you want groups of five, maybe you want groups of 10, maybe you want groups of 20. It can really be whatever works for your given course and document. Um, and then you can set up a reading so that everyone is annotating in small groups, but it's not really too much extra setup for you. You're just still setting up one document on your end. So those are all the benefits of the Brightspace integration. Um, and now I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough of how to set up a assignment in, um, in Brightspace with a hypothesis enabled reading. Before I get started on that, I just wanna pause for a moment to see if anyone has any questions. So you can feel free to either raise your hand or type them into the chat. So I am going to go into my Brightspace course. You'll notice I have this website pulled up already. Um, my instructions for creating hypothesis enabled readings in D2L. It might be helpful to bookmark this website. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste this into the chat because this has some information we're gonna grab as part of the setup process. So it's really just useful to have the site bookmark some more handy. Um, so when you're setting up your readings, it's easy to get to. 
So in my Brightspace course, I can go into one of my units on the left-hand side. Um, maybe I'll go into my week two reading area. And then once I get to the space where I want to upload my annotation assignment, I will click on existing activities. Super intuitive, right? No, not, I know it's weird, um, but that's what you want to click on, existing activities. And then you'll scroll to external learning tools uh, and click on that option. Once you get here, if you've created anything with any external learning tools, it'll be listed here. We want to ignore all this and scroll to the bottom. Scroll, scroll, scroll until you find that create new LTI link button. This is what I want to click, create new LTI link. And here's where I can put in some basic assignment information. So I'm going to make the title of my assignment. Um, I need to put in an LTI URL. This is where that website I linked comes in handy. So I'll click on over to this website. And I want to find this LTI URL that's listed here. Copy this LTI launches URL. Go back to my assignment and paste it in. So again, it's just easy if you have that handy. Sometimes Chrome will actually save it in, in, in like your box when you start typing stuff in. So it might save it for you, but I would definitely have this website handy when you're creating your hypothesis enabled readings. After you put that in and you kind of click in the white space, it should show you, okay, this is a hypothesis assignment. And then I can click create and insert. And now I have kind of created the shell for my reading. So the next step is I'll want to input the actual reading. I'll want to connect the actual reading to this shell. So I will click on the reading title itself. And then I'll have a couple different options. So right now, I'm going to focus on a few of these over the others. Um, you should all see at your institutions these um, checked off options to enter the URL of a web page or a PDF, um, to select a PDF from Google Drive, or to select a PDF from OneDrive. Uh, selecting a PDF from D2L or selecting a JSTOR article, we're going to be rolling out, but you might not see those options yet, so I'm not going to get into them for now. For now, I am going to choose the selected PDF from Google Drive option. And then I have the option to upload a new file here from my hard drive if I want, or I can um, use a file that I already have in my Google Drive. So that's what I just did. Here, if I do want to make it a small group annotation assignment, I would select this option. But if I want everyone to annotate together, I'm actually going to leave that blank and click continue. And basically, I have set up the basics of my an annotation assignment here. My reading is on the left and my sidebar is on the right. If I hop back to the tab with D2L, I can see that I have some other options here um, that I could add for, for the activity. So if I do want to add a grade item, I can click this here to um, create a new gradebook item for this annotation assignment. So I can create this gradebook item. Um, if I did want to put in some instructions, I can um, perhaps go into some activity details to do so. Um, but I'm just going to save this here and hop back to my main page. And you can see now I have this grading bar here since I've added the grading. So that's the basic um, process for adding a hypothesis enabled reading in D2L. Um, so I kind of gave you an overview. You might be thinking, okay, what kinds of documents can I actually load in to Brightspace uh, doing that process? 
I just showed you the process using a PDF. Um, you can also use the URL of a web page if it's a public facing web page. So anything that has um, that doesn't have a, um, a I'm like doing this because I, a paywall. <laughs> it comes up on the news article. Anything that doesn't have a paywall. And then open textbooks and open educational resources, you can also load in uh, to your Brightspace course, whether that's a PDF or a URL. You might have noticed we did have a JSTOR option on my side. We are working on a JSTOR integration, so you can easily grab those articles um, from JSTOR. Uh, and we're working on paid e-text versions as well. But right now, most people are using PDFs to load in with Hypothesis or URLs. Another thing um, that we haven't talked about yet is what you can actually add to annotations. So a lot of people tend to stick to text as the primary form of annotating. I think that's kind of how like, we learned annotation. We might not know that other options are there, but there's a lot of power in the other things that you can add to annotations. Um, students and you as the instructor can embed images. You can really easily embed YouTube or Vimeo videos. Um, you can use LaTeX to add equations, and then you can also use links and tags. So for people um, that have diagrams or videos that can really help show, demonstrate text in a way um, that is different from it being explained in text, that can really help different types of learners in a course. Um, so for example, if I'm reading about the law of conservation of momentum in physics, if I read that definition, it doesn't really click with me. But if I watch a video of what's happening when momentum, um, like two pool balls collide um, on a pool table and what happens to the momentum there, that makes a lot more sense to me. And you can add those within the annotations so that the students don't have to leave the reading to get that other um, explanation. One thing to note about the PDFs that you use with Hypothesis is that they do have to have something called a text layer, um, usually created with optical character recognition to be accessible and used with Hypothesis. So if you open a PDF on your computer and you select text and try to copy and paste that text, if you can do that, you already have the OCR layer you need on your document. Um, if you're not able to select text on your document, then you probably won't be able to use it with Hypothesis because you can't, um, Hypothesis won't know like what text to highlight. In that case, we do have a tool for you. So say if you have scanned a, um, an article or a book chapter on your home scanner, that probably needs to be um, run through OCR optical character recognition to get that text layer. This website, if you load a um, if you load a PDF into this website that does not have that OCR layer, this website will give you a version that has it that you can then use with Hypothesis. So I just dropped that into the chat. If you do need to add OCR to any of your PDF documents, all right. So we've gone through kind of what readings we can use with Hypothesis, what we can add to annotations, um, and all of the things I went through are also linked in the slides here. So the steps for creating Hypothesis-enabled readings in Brightspace, how to grade, and then some student um, resources as well as using small groups are all here. Um, so again, I wanna pause to see if we have any questions. And I also want to see how we are feeling after watching me set up a hypothesis enabled reading. So I know that just seeing someone do it once isn't the stickiest way, but how are we feeling about doing it? If you could answer my poll. Eric has a question about configuring the assignments a little bit more straightforwardly and menu-driven in Brightspace. 
uh, similar to the process in Blackboard. So one thing that we have been asking for a lot is at least to get rid of the copy and pasting of that URL. Um, I'm not sure the feasibility of the changing the process outside of that, um, because I'm just not super familiar, like personally with, um, how to configure those kind of tools in Brightspace, but I will definitely pass that feedback onto our product team to see what future work might be going into that. They've been doing a lot of Brightspace work lately because, like I said, we've had a lot of schools moving from Blackboard to Brightspace. The entire SUNY system, the entire CUNY system recently is um, doing the shift. So the small groups feature, for example, we just implemented that uh, earlier this year. D12 files, integrating those files is going to be rolled out shortly. Um, so I definitely think everyone is interested in hearing uh, ways on how we can make the integration with Brightspace work more smoothly. So thanks for that feedback, Eric. I'm going to copy and paste your comment into our um, feedback channel now. And thanks, everyone, for answering my poll. So, um. I just want to wrap up with some ideas on how you can get started. And I know people are kind of at different um, places in their hypothesis journey. Um, so I think hypothesis can work really well, whether you are annotating in face-to-face -face or in online classes. Um, I've heard from a lot of professors that um, in face-to-face -face classes, having students annotate before they come to class can really help drive the in-class discussion and make it a more active discussion. So reviewing those annotations and bringing up the annotations in class can help um, kind of bring everybody into the discussion. In fully online classes, hypothesis is a great way to shift away from discussion boards. And like I said before, uh, provide a space for students to build community and to contribute to the conversation of the content in the course. So if they have their own expertise, their own experiences in the field or in something related, they can bring those to the annotations. We have a bunch of a starter assignment instructions available. So if you're not sure how to get started with students in the presentation, there's a link to um, some instructions that you can use or adapt in your course. So I definitely check those out. And since you're all um, part of Hypothesis um, partnered schools, just some reminders of some things that you have access to. You have access to one-on-one -on -one instructional design consultations. So there's a customer success manager like me that is assigned to every school and can help you with Hypothesis. Um, so you should always reach out to our success email, which I'm putting into the chat. If you'd like um, further help with Hypothesis, we can connect you to the right person. Um, we have a Hypothesis resource page, which I have to add the link here, actually, because we had launched, launched it pretty recently, where you can see um, examples of assignment instructions that other professors have created. So I'm putting that link in the chat as well. If you want to see how other people are using Hypothesis, there's some rubrics and instructions here that you can check out in different disciplines. And then every week as you are here now, you know, we have partner workshops. We have different topics that are offered at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. So every Tuesday we're here. I'm um, talking about, you know, maybe using multimedia with tags uh, and annotations, rating annotations, lots of different topics we talk about each week. Um, so again, I'll open up the floor for questions, but if you do want some more one-on-one -on -one help, um, please reach out to our email here and we can definitely get you connected with the right person to get started. But does anyone have any thoughts or questions for the day?